Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because of the sovereignty of my love, men write about, sing about, minister and teach about my sovereignty and few understand it. Few things that people say about my sovereignty are actually true according to my word. But one thing that is true is that I am sovereign love meaning that I am the fullness of love and there is nothing beyond me that defines love except my being who I am, saith the Spirit of grace. When I said that God so loved the world, I meant He loved the world, that He would give His only begotten Son. I cannot love them any less than I love you. My love for them is as great as for my children inside. My love is sovereign in that. I love those on the outside and those on the inside with the same love. That love is perfect love and that love in itself cannot increase. But understand this, that I am also a God of pleasure. And even though my love cannot be increased, my pleasure can continually be increased, saith the Spirit of grace. I am pleased with those who walk in. I am pleased with those who search my word. I say these things for your understanding so that you understand and walk stronger in the earth than you ever have. You cannot of yourself know the report But I give you a report, saith the Spirit of grace, for I see the earth, and I see all mankind, and I see my church. For even in the church, for even in the church that understands the foundation of the doctrine of salvation and the blood that brings forth salvation unto mankind and repentance unto that blood, even to those who've come in, that is the starting place and to that there's a small minority of the earth though there be millions and millions still a small minority but among those among those who understand this in the earth and those who stand in that foundation even so there is a much smaller minority that understand the one who has come that I said would lead and guide you into all truth. Very few in my church understand that. And then among those who are in the kingdom of God, who understand and then do and begin to practice with the application of praying in other tongues, this narrows it down to a very very small very small minority you're among that minority saith the spirit of grace but I say your minority stands out with great strength that in this is that though my love cannot increase my pleasure increases to anyone who finds this place by my grace and deliberately goes in. But know this, that you're in that one percentile that understand and then do. So I'm saying to you, I'm saying to you, increase in these things. And also as you increase, know my pleasure. Know my pleasure. For those who are in the church, Very few know the reason why he's come or that he's even come. And beyond that, very few even practice what you among this church and others like it are actually doing. When I said one percentile, I said that to capture a place in your mind. That is not necessarily the exact number. But I want you to understand how few there are 
and how pleased the increasing of my desire is towards you to let you know I am pleased. Stay on this path. Stay on this path. And I'll also say to you, saith the Spirit of grace, that even though there will be other camps that will come to the same conclusion of what you call a renewal of the kingdom or revival, if they do come to that conclusion, they will have gone through the same path that you go through. There is no other way. It must be through the power of my spirit and my word. These two agree, and there will be no other way. It will not be through the doctrines of man. It will not be through the flash in the pan. It will not be through personalities. It will not be through great worship choirs. It will not be orchestrated through the things in which man can orchestrate. This renewal of the kingdom will only come through the power of my spirit. Therefore, I say unto you, not only am I pleased with you, but I also admonish you to say this. Do not look to any other camps. Do not look to... They have nothing that will add to what you are already doing and where you're going, saith the Spirit of grace. Amen. Look no other place. It's futile, a waste of time, and unsound for you to look any other place. Keep going straight forward. Glory to God. Wow. My God. No, you know, I can't say that kind of stuff. Jesus, we worship you. We glorify you. What confidence you give us. And thank you for this hug in the spirit. Thank you for this hug of pleasure. But also the admonishing not to look to the right or the left. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glorify you one more verse of something that may be that where we're at one of those of course refrain Homer if you couldn't hear him he said what we're being taught causes me to smile even being blind isn't that great hallelujah that's and that's the voice of not it is endurance but it's coupled with endurance and knowing that, see, we've got, a, we've got, a, God didn't do that to Homer. And Homer's going to be seen probably before Christmas. See, most of you, most of you didn't say amen. Because you're kind of like me. You really, no, I'm not saying that about myself anymore. I, I, I am there. I expect Homer to be seen by Christmas. But the doctrine, the doctrine that Homer is teaching, even in his infirmity, makes him in a place where it's already done and he is full of joy even where his physical state is at knowing that he gets to preach the gospel because he's bringing the two worlds together the application of the natural and the spiritual are absolutely coming together hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. amen these things, saith the Spirit of grace, will begin to appear much more rapidly because of the increase of revelation and the things that I am getting over to you. The reality of the kingdom is increasing present tense in many of you. And even among those that I squeeze or hug and say I'm pleased, even in that group, there are others or there is a group within a group going forward seek not to become part of a clique within a church seek to become part of the group that is going forward find the men and find the women who are speaking and repeating what is being said on a continual basis in doctrine and truth in the house make those your buddies Make those your friends. Those who squawk, boy, I believe the Holy Spirit would say squawk. Those who squawk and repeat other things contrary, love them, be good to them, feed them, be cordial to them, 
but buddy up to rub shoulders, make best friends with those who have a onward desire and an onward speech and an onward going heart towards these things that are being preached and taught in these days, saith the Spirit of Grace. Make that your group. Talk to them more often than anybody else. I just, <laughs> discerning a spirit, the Lord just, it's amazing. I just heard, I just heard it, and then he gave me the extra. Somebody said, well, what about them? What about reaching them? They're weak. They're, they are hearing enough, saith the Spirit of grace. Stop trying to be their nursemaid. I have not called you to bring them up. They are hearing enough from the pulpit to bring them forward. They are hearing love and they're hearing soundness. Nobody made you their nursemaid. You, how, you have out of your own human compassion tried to go back time and time again. Stop it, says the Spirit of Grace. Love them, but stop it and let my grace touch them. If my grace to this point has not been able to touch them, what can you do about it? I didn't intend to come home and do this. Jesus. Father, we worship you. Hallelujah. And it's getting close to that anyway, but turn with me to, to uh, Revelation chapter 12, and we'll look at verse 11. This is much of what I did there, and uh, you haven't heard it, and I don't know that I can trust all of you to go to the archives, okay? <laughs> so... Um, and if you're tuning in um, in the next week in, in this service, um, it's worth it because we've had some prophecy that, that we'll put up, okay? Um, but the full rendition of this teaching, I don't know that I'll do. Maybe I'll do over the next couple of weeks, but you can go to Jim Martin's website, and uh, the teaching was Onward Christian Soldiers. So it's really, really good. Um, so praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to continue to bear fruit and to bear arms and to go forward in the power of your spirit and, and everything that you're teaching us. Take us to the next level. Take us to the next level. And I thank you and I praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I just love, I really, really, really love, I, I listen to, uh, of course, I get to hear Homer here, so I don't have to necessarily, but I'll go back and especially listen to next, last Sunday's. Um, so he's one of these guys I'll listen to. But other than that, I listen to only a couple of guys. And it's not that, now some people will tell me, you know, some guys will call me and, or text me and say, you need to listen to this message. Um, uh, Barry, Brother Barry Johnson from... Uh, from Ohio's one, and then there's a couple guys out with uh, Gary. But other, other, usually, and it's not that other guys aren't qualified, it's just I don't really have, it's just a time factor with me, with me getting my, my time of prayer, meditation, and other things. So it, it's usually in those guys, it's, uh, it's uh, usually uh, Pastor Jim Martin or Gary Carpenter. You know, those are the other two guys, uh, probably besides for Homer, that I'm, I'm hearing. Uh, otherwise, I don't hear a lot of other people. It's just a time, time thing, and, and those are some, some of my, I feel like, some of the best teachers that there are, really, on the planet Earth. So praise the Lord. And it's really good. I love, I love what Pastor Jim said this week. He said he loves to be around Gary Carpenter. He loves to hear because he says, it, in a certain sense, it keeps him humble. And I'll tell you what, it is. It's a, and it's a good kind of humble because... It, Revelation and all the glory to God, I mean this, all revelation for me in the last year has increased incredibly. I, and I'm not bragging on myself, I'm just telling you, I know that it has. I, I know that the hand of the Lord, how many of you can say that the, the level of teaching in this house has gone to a, just another level in the last year? Just gone to another. And, and I appreciate that. And at the same time, I know that when I get around Gary and I'd go down to his room every morning, we'd have coffee and just listen and, and uh, 
he's just so down to earth, but I'll tell you, it's good to have somebody in front of you, out in front of you. So I look at, and, and I realize when I hear some of his teachings, I'm like, oh my God, um, I've got somebody in front of me. Praise God. I'm glad I'm not at the top of the food chain. Praise the Lord. I'm glad there's other people in front of me. Hallelujah. And he really, really is. So, amen. Revelation 12, uh, verse 11. We're going to read this. As I said, uh, just introduce it. This is John the Revelator, and he says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death. Now, a few things I want us to observe here, and if you will, once you read that, then you can, you can uh, look up, um, is this is not someplace way out in space. This is a prophecy. Uh, if you look at this, actually, even if you read, no, because we're not going to read the whole chapter. If you read this and say, wow, this is in the tribulation, and this is in the warfare, and this is in a fight. But actually, um, I agree, and I've meditated it myself, but I also agree with scholars that I've read. This is almost like um, the best word I could come up with is like a prequel. You know what a prequel is? You know, a sequel is like you're watching all the different episodes of Star Wars, okay? On the last, the Rogue One, I didn't know. I, I've never been a Star Wars guy. I mean, it's not that I didn't like it. It's just I didn't ever get into it. And once I watched a few of them, I thought, this is pretty neat. I went to one, the one before that, and I kind of liked it. And so when Candy took the kids to an animated show uh, a few months ago when Rogue One was out, I thought, you know, I told her, I'm not going in there with you guys. I'm going to duck in here. And I was ready. I had my popcorn. I had my Coke. You know, I'm really, you ready to go. You know, you got, and it's got to be buttered popcorn. Amen. Glory to God. Because if you don't have grease on your chin, you're not eating popcorn. Hallelujah. And so I'm sitting there and uh, Rogue One comes on and I'm like, what is, <laughs> what, did I come in the wrong theater? Because I, I got to know some of the guys in the last one, I thought a sequel is like you build on the last one. This is not a sequel, it's a prequel. It means it goes back beyond. And I'm like, I don't know. I, <laughs> I mean, I like seeing the stuff blow up, but other than that, I don't know what's going on here. It's does, this doesn't mean anything to me. So this reading here is a prequel. In other words, it's not just what's going on right then. It's what brought everything up to that point. Um, if we back up, we understand what was going on prior to the way things got to the way they were. Verse 7 says, there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels, and it prevailed and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God. Hallelujah. How many can say praise God for the kingdom of God? Yes, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused, accused them before our God day and night, and now here's where the ands come in. And I want to say just in the beginning of this is the ands. This is how we overcome by the what? The ands. The A-N-D-S. The ands of this particular. This is going to tell us something. There was a war. It's not just, it's not just talking about the war in the future of Revelation. This is, this is why. How many of you know we're fighting a war? And he wants to keep us. We're fighting a war really on two fronts. Now, there's a war in the flesh, okay? I don't know if any of you still have flesh hanging around, okay? That's meant to be funny, folks, okay? Help me out here. <laughs> Glory to be to God. We're all, I hope you're all war, war in a war in the flesh. But there's also a spiritual warfare. Now, that is somewhat of a spiritual, but there is, we are, re we're still wrestling against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And one of the, the biggest things that they want you and I, especially, I didn't come in here this morning with a thought of like God wants to brag on us or pat us on the back. 
But I appreciate pats on the back from our father where he says, I love you. Listen, uh, we're still going to talk about your flesh and my flesh dying. But folks, I want to tell you something. And, and, and this isn't to, to give you a fat head to walk out of here with. I travel the country enough and talk enough to people and I know enough to know this. The walk that you're on and a willingness to go into the dying of the flesh and spend time praying. You're on a you're on a upper crust of like an incredible. Uh, what the Holy Spirit say minority. Now we're not a minority in, in power. But if you think everybody's doing this, they're not. They're not. And uh, if you go to other places and you listen, if you happen to turn on the TV and you, you, you probably won't be able to sit there and watch it too long. Because the doctrine that's inside of us is just going to go yuck so fast that you won't be. How can you eat a big meal on a nauseated stomach? You can't. Unless you try to choke it down. And we, okay. Glory. I could, I could go on that for a while. Praise the Lord. Folks, where we're at, he just wants you to think more highly of yourself, not in a pride or, or a boastful way, but we've got something here in his grace or by his grace that we have to um, recognize and keep going forward with. Amen. And so this war that came, now the war that we're fighting right now also is, he says that, that this accuser, now th again, please, this is not a futuristic war. This is, he's saying this is why it is what it is. He, John looked in, and saw, and he saw this picture window, he saw through it, and he said, okay, the, the horrible war with the saints and the accuser of the brethren was cast down. When you look at the accuser of the brethren, if you think, and he said he, he accused them before God day and night. I hope you don't have. Now, it's possible that you could, because sometimes when you read this, it's possible to, to think of this, is that sa Satan is, I'm going to turn my back on you, that Satan is stationary, and he's standing before the throne of Almighty God, the Father. And he's just standing there day and night. Oh, well, you know, i got a long list here. I'm going to accuse Candy. I'm going to accuse Homer. I'm going to accuse Barbara. I'm going to accuse, you know, I'm going to accuse everybody that I can think of here. Uh, Kirsten, I'm, you're going to accuse. <laughs> he's not doing that. He is the God of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's a militaristic, he's, he, his whole, so he's not, first of all, God's not going to sit there day after day and listen to this, accusing. That's not what it's saying. And, he, and Satan, because his, the word says here in the latter verse, he knew that he knows that his time is short. He's not stationary. He's out there and he's working a work. And he's working a work. He's Listen, he's closed down more churches than you can possibly imagine. He's run off more preachers than you can possibly imagine. He's scandalized more preachers than you can possibly imagine. Because they didn't take him seriously. And he accuses them before God. And that's not saying that he's standing before God, but... He that, that, that he's literally in, in that place of just standing there accusing, giving accusation... But every single one of us that are on this walk, if you go into any degree, remember a few weeks ago we talked about Paul, maybe, maybe you weren't here on a, on a Wednesday night, we went through that whole litany, litany of different things that Paul went through in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, was it? And then in chapter 12, he says the reason why he went through all those shipwrecks, blah, 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 beating, 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 beating beatings, and all that, all that perils, peril, perils was next chapter was because of the, his revelation. And that's Mark chapter 4. Satan must stop the maturing of the word of God. In other words, if once you hear, let's, see, let's say, for instance, you come in here and you got all kinds of stuff in your, you got baggage. Let's say you do have some really flesh baggage. Um, if you sit under this and you hear it, that has the potential for you to go out of here and that began to root that up 
if it stays in there, if you let it stay in there for very long, and staying in there means you, you just begin to pray over it, and you seek God, and you pray in tongues, and, and you go back to it and meditate it on Monday morning yourself. And it, that's maturing. That's maturation. That's where the seed can get above ground, and then it can grow into a corn stalk, and then it can grow into an ear, and then the full ear in the corn. It can really grow. The potential of that to get you set free is always there, but then for you to become part of what God wants all of us to be part of is this last day harvest. And that is to be able to lay these paddles on sick people. I know that you know this, but I'm going to tell you. I'm, I'm going to treat you like, like I should with, with respect. The church was not created it wasn't formed by christ to get sick christians healed our format should not be having grace lines to get sick christians healed they should be being healed in and of themselves outside of these walls that's why james says is there any sick among you well, I like the way somebody said the other day, now, James, you haven't been to church recently, have you? There's a lot of sick people in the church. But I'm telling you, the days of Christian grace lines to get sickness off of Christians is waning. It's going to become a dinosaur. It's going to become non-existent. Our lines to get us healed should come to a place where, there, where there's no more lines for us. Because we take the word and we know that what was done by the blood of Jesus is so apparent to us and so real to us. We're teaching folks more than ever before the reality of the kingdom. Jesus did not send us to go pray for the sick. Nowhere. You can't find that he said go pray for the sick. He said go heal the sick. Amen. Don't make a good, that's a good college effort. Yes, sir. Go ahead, boy. Pray. Praise God. Pat on the back. You did what you did. Well, at least you tried. At least you gave him a good old college try. No, no, no. We're not called to go pray. It doesn't find it. It doesn't say go pray for the, it says go heal the sick. Amen. Glory be to God. Oh, y'all ain't giving me enough amens. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so what does he want us to do? Or what does the enemy do? He wants to accuse you day and night to, to, to blood suck you. And believe that you, so his, uh, this accusing is not like he's standing, oh, I'm accusing, I'm accusing gay, I'm accusing, I'm accusing uh, Yolanda, I'm accusing Ralph. I'm, no, he, he, sent, he is doing everything that he possibly can in your personal life to, to wane and to destroy the image of the possibility through accusation, you're not what you're supposed to be. Uh, you prayed, they died. You stood, they, they didn't make it. They left, they did this. They, he, he's constantly accusing you, and God sees it all. It's all before him. It's all before God, and God sees it all. But it's a personal, continual warfare to, to blanket our minds and keep us from going forward in an understanding of who we are, what we're about, and where we're going and the word says, and they overcame him. This is only the first part. And as I said, we're just introducing. They overcame him. Who? Satan. By the blood of the lamb. Now that blood of the lamb, that is not. Now listen. That's not you. I plead the blood. I'm not, I'm not making fun of anybody. I've done that before and before. And the, but that's, that's weak in understanding what is this blood. This blood is our, this blood that, it, it's Isaiah 53. This blood is not something you plead over. It's something innate. In other words, this blood gave me entrance into the kingdom. And once I'm inside of the kingdom, what he's saying is this bunch came to it's this. This scripture here is a sister to Matthew 24, 14. It's the prophecy towards the end. And this gospel shall be preached unto all men everywhere. What gospel? The gospel of salvation and the gospel of power. When I lay my hands on you, there is not no, I'm going to pray for you. There is, you're going to be healed. And I mean right now, right now. Hallelujah. And they overcame him past tense. This meant some bunch got there and some bunch did it. 
They overcame him by the blood of the lamb, and it wasn't like, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood, I plead the blood. No, that, that's just one example. This was that the blood, the gospel of everything that the blood afforded and brought us into became such a relevance in the hearts, and we're hearing that line on line. You're hearing it weekly here. You, I'm sure you heard it last Sunday. You're hearing the revelation of who we are and where we're going and how real it is and how we're su su supposed to expect it. That's why I said this this morning, and I, you know what it was this morning, and I brought up Homer a couple times this week, and we're not just trying to use Homer as uh, he's not our anthem around here. In fact, Homer just hates any attention at all, but I'll tell you this. Uh, I said something about it a couple times this week, but Gary brought it up, and Gary said, I, and he wasn't saying this to encourage the group and like, oh, yeah, that's really good. We're in a faith come. Gary said, I, and he said this to me privately, I totally expect to see Homer seen by Christmas. Amen. 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 Folks, I'm telling you, it's now. Right now, right now. It's now or never. <laughs> See, I don't have, don't, don't, please, don't coddle me. Oh, bless your heart. You can, uh, we might not be there today, but somewhere in the next 10 years or so, we're going, no, listen, I don't have 10 years. I'm not dying or anything, but listen, I didn't get saved when I went to the conference in Tulsa in 2000. Uh, when did I go? 1997. I did, that's not the year I got saved. I didn't get saved then. I'd already been saved. I, I was filled with the Holy Ghost at 11, baptized. No, saved at 11, baptized in the Holy Ghost at 12. Man, I, I've been saved and filled with the Holy Ghost more than a lot of y'all have been alive. About 45 years I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. And I, as, as I said with my testimony last week, I got the boringest testimony in the world. Boringest. Saved 11, filled with the Holy Ghost, never went back. Never went. It was you natural? Oh, yeah. I got, me, I got me a woman. Hallelujah. Beautiful woman. In other words, I liked the girls. In high school, I was, I, well, you was a sissy. No, I, they, I, I think they did this to be mean to me, but on the practice squad, I was a nose tackle. And you know, that's a bad place. Because you're going to get hit by that, that you're going to either get hit by the center, one of the guards is going to hit you, or that running back is going to hit you, and that running back, or the fullback is going to hit you first, or that running back is going to run over you because he's got like five yards head start. And I think they just like to see me get run over all the time. But I wasn't a sissy. That's all I'm trying to say. But what I'm saying is this. I've been in this a long time. Don't tell me, for me, okay, uh, and we don't, we don't live in a church of coddlers, do you understand that? We live in a church of, 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 of encouragers, encouragers, and we do whatever we say, we say in love. But I don't want none of y'all to say, well, pastor, I know you're kind of on a guilt trip. I'm not on any guilt trip. Every morning when I worship him, he loves on me and he tells me, you know, basically, and this isn't exactly the words, but I'm proud of you. You're doing a good job. I feel that affirmation. I don't have to have... But listen, we don't have 10 years or 15. We can't tell ourselves this is going to happen sometime in the future on a, pl on a planet far, far away <laughs> in another galaxy. That's why I'm asking you to live in an expectation. And when I say things like, like Homer's going to see like right now or before Christmas, I hope that's not threatening to you. That is an example of every single one of the things that you and I are standing for is saying, look, th this, this thing of play in church, we haven't been playing church. I'm not saying that. But this thing of putting the kingdom coming out there, I expect you to be calling me on a daily basis saying, I laid my hands on them and immediately they got up. The, boy. I just got a reality of the maimed being made whole. Like, right now, people, it's on me. I'm telling you, we're going to see some limbs that were not there in that crusade that he preached and he taught. The Bible says the maimed were there and every one of them got whole. Maimed means 
leprosy rotted something off. Uh, their nose was off. Uh, their arm was, you know, if you got a cut back then, you didn't, you, there was no penicillin. There was no interjection. You couldn't get something to stop. Gangrene was set in, and it either rot off, either they just chopped it off with, with primitive instruments, or it just rotted off. There were legs that were, had been rotted off or accidents that had taken place. And the Bible says the maimed, they stood in wonderment. And they, we're going to wonder too, but at the same time, I'm telling you, we're going to see. I remember now. Gary said, I hope this doesn't embarrass Homer. It won't because he's a, he said, I'm telling you, Homer's going to be healed before Christmas. or We're going to see Homer seen before Christmas. And he says, I'm standing. I said, that toe is going to be back too. Hallelujah. He got a little bit of um, his, his big toe missing. And we're just using, uh, we can use Homer as, as, a, as, as, as a guide this morning or as an example this morning because he, he helps pastor here. Uh, but even the rest of that toe is going to grow out. And I don't know what it is about you. Everything, listen, I will still pray for you anytime you come up here. Okay. But I got to put inside of you the mentality that we don't have church for us to get healed. We're supposed to be walking in healing. We're supposed to be bringing them in to get healed. Hallelujah. Stand with me this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. We did pretty good. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of that introduction? Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. We glorify you. We praise you. We give you all the praise and glory. Let us go out of here. Let none of this word be stolen from us in the name of Jesus. Let it all just continue to grow and grow and grow. We bind any work of Satan against stealing it. Lord, in Jesus' name, we speak life and blessings over your people. And thank you for it in Jesus' name. No church tonight. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah.